Hey folks, you're watching Archetype of Man channel. I'm Nick, out on the range today, taking a break from running some drills. So, if you may have noticed, uh, I've been doing a lot more revolver content, and revolvers as carry guns. I have not typically been kind to the idea. Now, here's my Smith & Wesson 36-2, this is a 38 Special. Uh, five shot, pretty lock, nice gun, I love it. It's fun. Uh, I have carried it. Here is my Ruger LCRX uh, 327 Federal Magnum. There will be a link floating around uh, for the review on this, as well as the Harry's Holster, that's what I just had there, Kydex Icon 2.0. Uh, six shot revolver, instead of the five shot in a J frame or even a comparable LCR in 38 or 357. Been carrying this one. So, why, when I have typically been a fan of Things like this. This is my SIG P365X macro with a TLR7A light, hollow sun, uh, 507K red dot, 17 round mag capacity, uh, comped muzzle. Why would I go to a revolver? Um, why the about face? Well, it comes from a place of not knowing what I didn't know. Um, the gun industry typically tells you that you need, need, no questions asked this or you'll die in the streets uh, these are relegated for boomers um, and people that don't know any better and you're gonna die in the streets if you don't have you know 20 rounds in the gun and a comp and a red dot and a light so the less we know sometimes the more we think we know and I'm not immune to that um, the more life experience I gained the more flexible I've gotten with what I carry and things like that. The one thing that hasn't really changed is that I normally always carry. The exception to that rule being places that I just can't, like courthouses or going to the kids' school for something like that. Uh, but I, 99% of the time, have a gun on me. Working and managing a gun store, uh, for instance, which is what I did up until November, that is going to and from a place where I can then open carry uh, well, I technically legally open carry on the way to and from. It's just not my thing. But in the store, I would typically open carry. But going to and from, uh, opening and closing the store, that's your high risk time. That is a uh, kind of a high stakes place to rob. And we can't say that people don't rob gun stores because they do. It's all over the news. So high value target, high stakes. Um, something like this makes a lot of sense. Now, I do grading, clearing, uh, outdoorsy work. I won't say there's no human element to any risk, uh, but most of my risks are going to be things like wild hogs or snakes. And even that, I mean, you can typically outrun a snake. Or uh, maybe a rabid dog or a feral dog or uh, maybe a bear. And even bears I don't really worry about. So with that context, if I'm A, going to go armed, and then B, um, not all of my job is sitting in a piece of machinery. Some of it's very physical, where something like this gets kind of obtrusive. Something like this doesn't, but it enables me to stay armed and reasonably well armed. Uh, 327 mags, no slouch. Um, sure beats a NAA in the pocket, right? In terms of both shootability and terminal ballistics. Uh, the other thing is sweat, right? I'm in Georgia, doing manual labor, gets hot most of the year. Sweat on optics, sweat on the semi-auto um, leads to the potential for a lot of problems. And if you're not going to come home every night and clean things out, which I don't know about you guys, but if you've built a retaining wall for 10 hours during a day, the last thing you want to do is come home and fiddle fart with that. You want to come get a shower, you want to eat, maybe have a cold beer and go to bed. Revolvers are, to paraphrase Caleb Giddings, tolerant of neglect, not abuse. Uh, so you get a little bit more leeway. Don't really have to worry about the slide, uh, whether or not it'll work, because there's been Georgia boy fupa sweat getting in there. Um, the revolver gives me a little bit more leeway there. The other thing is we have to look at the stats. Uh, stats say three rounds, three yards, three seconds. Most self-defense encounters that involve actually shooting because there are a number of defensive gun uses that simply involve, hey, 
leave me alone. Um, no rounds fired or, or you know, I'm, you say whatever you want, maybe not those words, might choose some spicier language. So I think a more realistic approach um, and a realistic risk assessment led me to the conclusion that for most of what I do and where I live, I forgot to mention that, uh, I live in rural North Georgia. Uh, yes, we have drugs. Yes, we do have violent crime. Uh, yes, people are unpredictable. Hence why I carry a gun. Now, if I lived in a more urban center where my ratio of interacting with people goes up, then statistics would also say that if you have a thousand people, uh, your risk is this. And then if you have millions of people, your risk goes up. Um, maybe this makes more sense. And that's my next thing is on the other side of gun world, you have people that say you should have one gun, you should train with that gun, you should uh, you don't switch your carry guns. Now I think switching carry guns for the sake of it's Tuesday, I want to carry something different. That is probably not a valid <laughs> reason. Or hell, maybe it is. If you're putting in the training and then the competencies there and the proficiency there, do what you want. Um, but there are times that I think changing the carry gun makes sense, right? So day to day, I'm Billy bobbing it up, Bob the Builder, building walls, clearing lots, running a chainsaw. This makes sense for me. May not to you, makes sense to me. And if it doesn't to you, leave it in the comments. But then my son has an appointment in Atlanta um, and it's in the afternoon. Uh, rush hour traffic, may go and do something else while we're down there, consolidate our trips into hell and back, you know. Um, maybe this, with or without the spare magazine, makes more sense. You do you. For me, that's kind of how I adjust the day's loadout. Now, I know somebody's going to say, but what if something happens and you have to go to Atlanta and you don't have time to go change your gun? Well, then I, I go to Atlanta with this um, or, or wherever. I go live my life. Being prepared uh, can easily turn into a state of paranoia. And when you look at the statistics, most of us are never going to get in a gunfight. Most of us are going to go about our lives and we're gonna be just fine. But there's a possibility. And I think that uh, recognizing that possibility and training to be able to deal with that possibility is a prudent choice. But not to get so wrapped up in it that you're just waiting for that to happen because you've convinced yourself that it's not if, it's it's when. Um, so sometimes we have to come back down to ground. Now, why is it that we get that way? Um, I think the industry, right? If, if you have this, well, and you're convinced that that's enough, you're not gonna go buy this, right? If you have a stock Silverado and that's enough for you, but then, the entire truck industry says you're going to get bogged down anytime it rains. Well, then you end up with that or you just hate uh, saving money on gas. I don't know. But the same thing, right? The industry profits by people buying stuff. Now, that's not to say that's not a, a valid investment or that maybe you shouldn't have one of those um, because I think it's smart to have, you know, different tools for different things. But a lot of the marketing comes from a place of spend your money um, or you're gonna die in the streets. Get killed in the streets, as some of the Facebook groups say. So, I think a realistic approach is good. So, I'm going to kind of wrap this up by saying, if I have previously ranted and railed against you for this, um, carrying this, my apologies. And if you're gonna rant and rail against me for carrying this, I'm at it. I'm, uh, I'm okay with it, whatever. So if you carry a revolver, um, I'd be interested to know because I feel like there's, there's really two schools of thought. You have stuff like this, um, all metal 38 J frame, and then you have the LCR category, um, which is a lot wider. Uh, and, and I, like I said, I've got another video extolling what I perceive to be the virtues of the 327 mag that will be floating around in the description. But if you are a revolver toter, um, please let me know down in the comments your reasoning, what you carry. Um, all that is kind of cool to me. So there's something about them. If you don't like revolver content, 
Well, I got I got kind of bad news for you because I'm really enjoying shooting them and I tend to film what I enjoy shooting. So <laughs> it's going to be a lot of revolver stuff. That doesn't mean I'm getting rid of stuff like this. Uh, I still like it, but I'm, I'm infatuated with wheel guns at the moment. So there's that, guys. Stay safe. Don't forget to drop down in the comments your experiences, uh, preferences, things like that with revolvers. Huge thank you to my Patreon and channel members. You guys rock. Uh, your support means everything in a time where I can't really count on YouTube's rules to actually be rules and for their enforcement to be fair. Uh, and in turn, jeopardizing the ad revenue that I use to keep the channel going. The support of you guys on Patreon and my channel members, that means the world to me. And I am eternally grateful um, for you guys helping make all this a little bit more feasible and less out-of-pocket expense incurred. So thank you all. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.